Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you for joining us online from your place to ours. Welcome to Plant Protein, the new age of food. Today's session, Company Pitches, part two of session two, uh, presented by the CSE. We are pleased to have three companies and a not so special moderator. Paul Shapiro, CEO of the Better Meat Company. James McKinnis, CEO of Globally Local and David Kerbel, CEO of Ritual Superfoods, Inc. I will be your Q&A moderator, and this completes today's lineup. Our objective, our objective in running Plant Protein, this Plant Protein series is threefold. First, to get, give companies visibility and traction on an accessible platform. The second is to inform capital markets, players, and investors about the types of companies in this space while also providing new knowledge of what is happening in the plant area. Thirdly, and this is a compliment to the opening session, the opening series on the science of the protein, we wanted to give you the base. And now that you have it, you can hear these companies with a deeper understanding. If you already knew the science, the listening field has been equaled. This will be the final week of presentations, but not the final week of plant protein. Next week, we'll be moving to financing and investing, marketing and consumer adoption. It'll be a round table fireside chat format and one of our moderators is well known in the space, Nicole Marchand of uh, Snowcap Ventures. As for you, the attendees, we do ask that you share your ideas and feedback with our presenters. Leads, possible funding, after due diligence, referral of someone with unique applicable expertise, or maybe even a potential strategic relationship. You can find their contact information in the profile box as well on the right-hand side. We encourage you to use the chat box. If you have questions, submit them. We may get to them. We may not, if we don't, um, please send us an email. I can put my email address or you can write uh, barrington.miller at the CSE.com. Please keep the chat uh, friendly and nice. Direct the question, make sure you're directing the question to the person and or company you wish to answer. Uh, it'll speed up the process as well. Uh, some housekeeping matters. If the images aren't clear or pictures are incomplete, check your bandwidth, refresh your screen, and like all IT solutions, <laughs> unplug and restart. We have a disclaimer. This presentation is for information purposes only and is not a solicitation to make an investment in either shares or debt or to buy and sell stock. Uh, I make no representation about any of these companies. Each company will have a seven minute presentation with or without a PowerPoint. When they see my face, that means you, they have about 30 seconds. And when I wave my hand like this, after all the companies have presented, we will move to Q&A with me, Barrington Miller. Our presenters, in order, will be Paul Shapiro, CEO of the Better Meat Co., James McInnes, and David Kerbel. Paul Shapiro is up because he unfortunately has a time crunch, and we want to make sure that you learn about him. Paul Shapiro is the author of the national bestseller, Clean Meat, How Growing Meat Without Animals Will Revolutionize Dinner and the World. The CEO of the Better Meat Co., a four-time TEDx speaker and the host of the Business for Good podcast. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Barrington. All right. So it is no longer really a secret that the planet is not getting any bigger. But the primary way that we leave that footprint is going to our food principally in the amount of meat that we eat because it just takes up a lot more land a lot more water and a lot more other resources to produce animal protein than it does to produce plant protein. This is why so many people are interested sorry, Paul. in. I'm going to jump in. Sorry. Do you mind turning off your video? Maybe that'll um, that'll help sure. it go through because it's breaking up. Okay. Let's Good give point. that a shot. Sorry. sorry about that. Well, I hope that you enjoy seeing a static image of me. It might be preferable to seeing the real me. So, um, it's no longer any secret that it just takes a lot more land, a lot more water, a lot more greenhouse gas emissions to produce animal protein than it does to produce plant protein. And this is why you see so much interest in alternative proteins today and making them not really. Okay. Thanks, Barrington. I hope this is better. You know, give me a, uh, tell me if it's, tell me if it's not better, but I'll proceed. proceed. So, if you think about 
outputs of pollution are producing more sustainable proteins to feed humanity. Many people have thought, well, if we can make plants that taste like meat, we could reduce the footprint of the food industry. And that's where you get companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. And that's fantastic. Other companies are thinking that they're going to make real meat, not a meat substitute or a meat alternative, but real actual meat without having to raise animals by growing animal cells, oftentimes called clean meat. That too is wonderful. But just in the same way that the problem of fossil fuels is so severe that you want lots of alternatives. You want land, you want to have, make sure you have uh, wind, solar, geothermal, and more. The problem of factory farming of animals is also so serious that we need lots of alternatives. Plant-based meat and clean meat are two great alternatives, but there is a third alternative that also is working quite well, and that is hybridization, creating plant animal protein combinations that allow for the consumer to continue to eat meat but enjoying a much lower footprint product. So at the Better Meat Co., which is the, a Sacramento-based B2B ingredients company, we offer plant protein formulas that our customers, large food companies, blend directly into their products like meatballs, sausages, chicken nuggets, and more. So I'll give you one example. Purdue Farms, which is one of the largest chicken companies in America, utilizes Better Meat Co plant protein formulations in their chicken nuggets, tenders, and patties. These are products that are 50% chicken, 50% plant-based. They're called Purdue Chicken Plus. They're sold in 7,000 grocery stores, and the Food Network just named them the best-tasting frozen chicken nugget in America. So think about that. The best-tasting frozen chicken nugget in America is only 50% chicken. That really speaks volumes about how we can make the more sustainable option actually the better tasting option as well. And so what we do is we take plant proteins, fibers, fats, and flavors. We combine them in ways that are unique and proprietary and offer them as a one-stop shop, a plug and play for major food companies to blend into their meats, whether it be beef, chicken, pork, fish, turkey, crab, and other major meat categories that they can not only make the product taste better and more sustainable, but also make the product better for the consumer by reducing saturated fat, reducing cholesterol, reducing total calories, increasing fiber, and again, all while making it taste better. So rather than a taste sacrifice, we enhance it to the point where the Purdue Chicken Plus Nuggets, when tested against conventional solely chicken nuggets, actually performs better. So you have in those blind taste tests, about 60% of people say they just can't tell any difference whatsoever. 30% say that the blended version actually tastes better. 10% prefer the solely meat version. In other words, 90%, 90% of consumers say either they can tell no difference or they actively prefer the blended option. We also sell into the National School Lunch Program, uh, making better burgers that students prefer over burgers that are made solely with beef so that they can reduce their own footprint on the planet while also having burgers that are just better for the students. Again, less saturated fat, cholesterol, and calories. So what we are seeking to do at the Better Meat Co. is to create another option, a way that we can put plant proteins into the mainstream by putting it directly in the meat itself. Many people have been amazed to see how quickly plant protein has entered the meat aisle of the supermarket. And we are taking that one step further, entering not only the meat aisle, but the meat itself. And by doing that, we can create options for flexitarians and other folks who still want to eat meat, which is nearly everybody, and still be able to have a better product, better for the planet, better for them, that's also cost competitive. So here at the Better Meat Co., our goal is to let consumers have their meat and eat it too. We want to create a way that is easy, that is sacrifice-free, and that will ensure that the big food companies, like the meat players and more, can reduce their own footprint on the planet simply by using our plug-and-play ingredients to hybridize their products and make better meat. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul. And uh, yeah, we're sorry. Uh, we're sorry about the connection, but at least you got the message across. Very briefly, uh, for our audience, it was a really funny story on how <laughs> Paul and the Better Meat Co. came to be on this show. We were we were trying to come up with a lineup, and 
some companies weren't getting back to me and some companies were um, not fully committed. Uh, so all I did was a Google search for plant protein and plant-based companies either like that are famous or going to list or going to do an IPO or private and stay, whatever the search was, um, the Better Miko came up as the fourth company. I already knew the, the, the first three. And so I reached out. <laughs> I reached out and I, I talked to a, a, a lovely person and she put me in touch with Paul. And Paul's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, but I can do it up this time. So that's how it came to be. It was that easy. And I think that just goes to show uh, the customer service level that's available at the Better Meat Co. So nice. uh, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if, uh, if Paul knew that. Um, I, I, I did in Barrington, but I'm very I'm very grateful because we are a very customer centric company. We will do whatever our customers want. So I'm giving you a fist bump from here oh, in California. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Some uh, Cali love. <laughs> um, now we're moving on to with uh, James McGinnis, CEO of Globally Local. James McGinnis is an accomplished entrepreneur with nearly 15 years of experience founding and building scalable international businesses. James was the co-founder and CEO of the financial technology firm Cyborg Trading System for nearly eight years, where he built a team of over 50 employees, uh, opened international offices, and serviced large clients. Without further ado, it is over to James. All right, thanks very much. Um... So yeah, um, I uh, I'm obviously a founder and CEO of um, Globally Local. Um, so really, uh, I guess just to start off, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a video because it, it kind of will give a little bit of um, feeling for our brand and what we do and kind of uh, how how we're changing the world. So I'm gonna do a screen share here. All right, so um, yeah, so that that kind of gives you a feeling for for what we do. So we are um, we are a plant based food technology company, and we are focused on specifically disrupting the fast food industry. So um, as people are aware, the fast food industry is is one of the um, most problematic, I think, uh, food uh, industries in the world. I mean, if you look at uh, their impact on um, human health, um, land use, water usage. Um, if you look at their impact on uh, obviously uh, killing of animals, these are all really uh, horrible things that that we uh, we plan on on ending. So, this is why our company exists. This is um, you know part of the change that we're we're planning on making. So, um, just to give a little bit of background of the company, so we were founded in actually in 2014. We started off as, as a we've always been a vegan company. So, I started this company uh, because I went vegan at that time. And I, you know, noticed uh, huge health uh, changes, and and really, uh, you know, um, slowly shifted to to being vegan for primarily ethical reasons. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we we started as as like a as a produce company actually, and and uh, the goal the goal was to connect people to better food, uh, connect them to farmers, uh, uh, local farmers, and um, we we just we we slowly actually um, kind of got into fast food because. Really, we were looking for a way of, of getting people access to eating uh, plant-based foods. And we, we found that people really were really excited about the homemade burgers that we were making. So we make all of our own food from scratch. And I think that's uh, what really differentiates us from other, uh, other uh, fast food uh, players. Um, all of our foods made, obviously, from whole, uh, whole food, plant-based ingredients. And this is something that really does connect with... Um, with your average uh, consumer, you know, people want um, healthier, simpler uh, uh, products that they can understand, and that's something that we've focused on since day one. And that's uh, it's obviously what, what people are excited about with with our with our products. They feel like they're eating uh, healthier, better foods, um, you know, made from plants. Um, so back to kind of where we where we uh, how we got into fast food. So we, really, we we started with a food truck. And uh, the first the first kind of event, that big event that we went to was actually Ribfest 2016. And Ribfest is the biggest, largest meat uh, festival in Canada. And we came to Ribfest with a vegan Big Mac. 
and um, and actually we sold out at Ribfest, and people were just shocked that here's this uh, you know uh, vegan company showing up at our meat festival. How dare they? And uh, you know we were lined up uh, yeah, literally across the park, and the meat vendors couldn't believe it that uh, you know this this brash company would come along and and, and dare to do this. So, uh, but anyway, we did it, and we were really successful. We sold out, and we sold you know something like five six thousand burgers or something in the course of, of a few days. And uh, that kind of made international news because at the time that was in 2016. This is like very early in in uh, veganism and plant based going mainstream. And um, and from there we opened our first actually fast food restaurant location in 2016. It was a uh, it was Canada's first vegan fast food restaurant uh, that opened in London, Ontario. And um, shortly after we actually opened uh, a drive through location, a 24 hour vegan drive through, and that was the world's first uh, 24 hour vegan drive through, uh, also located in London. So. Um, since then, we've, we've actually um, uh, we've expanded to Toronto. We started franchising. We've, uh, we sold our first franchise in Windsor, and right now we have uh, ten locations under development uh, in Ontario, with a uh, pretty ex- pretty uh, aggressive expansion strategy into the states and, and other other areas. Um, so, just uh, a little bit of background on how our company is organized. We have basically. Um, uh, food manufacturing technology division, which is where we we uh, we develop all of our own foods. We produce them, manufacture them, develop them. We have a, t- a team of scientists and uh, researchers that uh, that you know help us. That we, we develop the products, obviously, and and these products then go directly to our our, our restaurants. Um, the restaurants then prepare them and and uh, you know sell them directly to, to consumers. So really, we 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 always felt it was very important to connect directly to the consumer, and that's for us. Uh, we we go. You know, right from manufacturing it to distributing it, right to uh, preparing it, and uh, in in the way that we think it's it's best prepared. And um, yeah, I mean, we've had a, like a, a lot of success to date, and and our um, our growth plans are are pretty aggressive. So the um, yeah, and I mean, in terms of like you know our our sort of um, you know future expansions, we we're currently looking at going to uh, retail potentially. So. Um, again, that's part of uh, part of our growth strategy. So we have a number of retail products that people can would be able to cook at home, and and again, our focus is on making things that are easy for people to to cook and and uh, easy for people to prepare at home. Um, and we're also doing a number of really innovative things uh, in the restaurant space as well. So for example, our restaurant operations they're they're a thousand square feet, very small, very compact. They're eight, eight seats. Uh, what I what I call like COVID proof. So we've actually done really well in COVID, um, which which is I think a, a different uh, story for many restaurants. Unfortunately, it's it's a pretty un, pretty sad situation. But but um, we just because we've been uh, always a takeout focused business, the um, uh, we really we've really done done well in COVID. I think that's uh, that's. Um, you know, because of our our compact model, our our, our um, the way we cook our food. So our, our food is actually all cooked on demand. So another difference between typical fast food restaurants is that most restaurants will hot hold your food. So by the time you eat the burger, it's maybe sitting there for 20 minutes or half an hour. So um, we we specially um, manufacture our food so that I can cook with within with very specialized cooking technology at our restaurants in, in a minute. So our food cooks very quickly. It's fresh, uh, made fresh. And uh, and again, this is something that that I think is is um, many consumers are you know really like about about that model. So um, uh, yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of a background of our business and, and where we're going, and we're really excited to to be part of the, the future plant based world and and uh, really make make uh, make a big change in the world. Well, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, we appreciate it. Again, I encourage our attendees to submit questions, but as this is a you know, a family show. Keep your comments above board and please direct it to a specific company. We appreciate feedback and we agree that, that you might not you might not agree with everything that you're hearing or or what, but uh, there's a way to be civil. So uh, let's let's keep it clean. Um, last but not least, uh, David Kerbel from Ritual. Now, <laughs> I, I, in my head, I keep going r- 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 Ritual because it has two R's. Uh, in the front, but uh, David Kerbel is CEO of Ritual and has over 30 years of senior experience in retail brokerage and CPG industries. From 2008 to 2011, he served as Senior VP of Sales at um, Celsius Holdings, Inc., uh, CELH on the NASDAQ. During his tenure, Celsius grew in re- its retail sales from 400000 to a multi-million dollar figure, developed nationwide representation with Crossmark, Inc., 
and established a distribution with industry giants such as 7-Eleven, Ralph's, Costco, BJ's, Wholesale, CVS, Walgreens, and more. Take it away, David. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to James and to Paul. Um, appreciate your presentations. I'd like to talk to you about Ritual Superfoods. Um, Barrington, again, thank you and uh, really CSE because I think this is a terrific platform. We're focused on, and, and Grace is helping out with the presentation, so thank you, Grace. Um, we're, um, we're focused you know, on the, the premium adaptogen and functional mushroom space. If you could go to the next two slides, that's just our disclaimer. Really, this is the most important piece of the whole pie here. So I started off 35 years ago with Procter & Gamble, and we learned two things right out of the get-go. Number one is to do the right things the first time. That's to plan ahead and to act decisively once you plan. The second piece is really one of our biggest focuses here, and that's to take our products and our brand, Ritual Superfoods, and really have that within an arm's length of consumer desire. That's really where we're going here. We feel that we've got a nice alternative within the functional food marketplace that gives a mental and a physical um, property and function, delivers on that certain function. Our three hero ingredients, and we'll talk about this as we go through, are um, functional mushrooms tied in with herbs and adaptogens to really, again, focus in on immunity, on focus, and on really stress relief and de decompressing. So we start off with a big team. We've got a team of 15 full-time folks, most of them north of the border, that have tremendous amount of CPG experience, over 100 collective years. I'm the senior guy in the, in the group here, but collectively, we've got over 100 years of doing this. And that's bringing wellness and natural plant-based products, vegan and organic, to the marketplace as a supplement to serve and focus in on specific functions. We've got retail commitments. So we started off as that was our vision. The retailer commitments, the brick and mortars, we've already achieved. In the first quarter, as we are in 2021, we're a year old company, by the way, we've put together this team and we've reacted very well. We've got organic certification in record periods of time. So it's enabling us to work with the retailers that allow that plant-based protein, they allow that plant-based alternatives within the functional food marketplace and the mushrooms and the adaptogens that we have in our formulation to get this retail commitment. So our, our goals in the beginning of 2020 were to engage e-commerce and brick and mortar and we've achieved those goals so we've got this great formulation we'll get into we've got 2400 stores in brick and mortar we're we're creating our own e-commerce platform and i'll be on one of the largest e-commerce platforms by the end of q1 here our revenue projections we'll talk about separately if anybody wants to my emails on the end of this presentation so really two pieces in reformation of where we're going and how terrific the plant-based opportunity is, is that um, number one, we were, we were recognized by a consortium of retailers and e-tailers, and we won the Buyer's Choice Award in ECRM, which is a consortium of 31 retailers in October of 2020 and voted our Ritual Rishi Relax product as the Buyer's Choice Award. Independent of that, Whole Foods came out and stated to the world that mushrooms and, mush and, and mushroom adaptogens and functional foods are really the number one trend for 2021. So we're real excited by that. If you could go to the next slide, I'd appreciate it. So within the functional food marketplace, globally, it's a $275 billion market. We reside within the functional mushroom and adaptogen space, which is a $34 billion marketplace. If you could go to the next slide. So who are we and what we are? So our hero items are the chaga, mushroom, 
and you've got a picture of it right in front of you there. Our chaga mushroom, so after our 15th Zoom call of the day that you can all appreciate, and, and all of this stress and tension, the reishi really takes a little bite out of it and helps us relax. And then the lion's mane for cognitive focus. So we've got three hero items. We pair those up with adaptogens that typically you'd have to buy separately. We have ashwagandha root and alethro root that typically a consumer would have to buy, whether it's via e -com or, or it's via uh, our retail brick and mortar. You'd have to do two separate occasions. We combine these into great tasting products. So if you could keep on going, I'd appreciate it, Grace. Really some comparative analysis that are out there. Four Sigmatic is out there, layered Ohm and Moon Juice, and more power to them. They, they, they've really formed a nice path. What we've done here at Ritual, though, and you can go on to the next slide, is hit every milestone that we've uh, put in front of ourselves. So we put this team together, this 100-year-plus 100, 100 team of CPG execs, we're able to get organic certification that sometimes takes companies six months or nine months to get. We're able to get it in six weeks. We're able to get a product, create a design, get a terrific formulation by experienced formulators, and turn that in to the products that we've got that have retail commitments, have e-tail commitments. We'll be in over 3,000 doors and over 10,000 points of distribution now. So by the end of this first quarter, we'll, be, we'll begin shipping our product. And by Q2, we'll be in over 3,000 doors nationwide. For the next slide, if you could, please. And really what's important here, so our contract manufacturer has the same exacting standards as we do. So when you stop and think about doing things right the first time, we pre-plan this, USDA organic, um, that allow us to go into multiple marketplaces here. And Barrington's handsome face is right here, so I'm going to be cut short. So if you could keep on going, I'd appreciate that. Uh, to the next slide. And really, here's where we are. Items that are stick pack for on the go, our tub pack um, for and my, my plug of the day here for multiple usage. We're plant-based, we're organic. We're natural, we're better for you, we create functions and solve the world's problems here. So I'm extremely excited to present Ritual Superfoods to you, and we look forward to serving you all uh, in the coming months ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you to our presenters. As I mentioned at the top of the hour, uh, Paul Shapiro from the Better Meat Company had a previous engagement. Um, at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. So unfortunately, uh, we can't get to them. I know there were some US-based questions uh, discussing the, the different types of ecosystems that exist in California for uh, plant-based and plant protein. And um, I thought it was really interesting as far as the, the gradual, <laughs> instead of going from meat eating to not meat eating, it's a, it's a very nice blend and um, there were some cool questions. Now. At the CSE, we like to also give some shout outs because this isn't just about companies and listing and going public and not going public and private. It's also just for entrepreneurs. And a special one goes out to Lindsay Sutton from Lovingly Made Ingredients in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, check out uh, Lovingly Made Ingredients, reach out to her on LinkedIn and support the plant and plant based uh, industry. So I am going to be the Q&A moderator, and I am borrowing from the previous Q&A moderator, Glenn Frazier at MNP, who did a fantastic job. Um, and this is a general question for both of you. You guys can pick uh, which ones, which one you answer. Who answers first? Uh, what are the most significant challenges in the plant-based food industry? If I could, James. Go, yeah, go ahead. Right, thank you. Uh, you know, the first thing is availability. We want to make sure that we've got it within that arm's length of the consumer desire. Really, the second one is to make sure that the product tastes good. And the third is efficacious. We really need to do what we say we're going to do. So I think that 
in the plant-based world, we talk about an evolution and we talk about hot items and, and categories, and that's all well and good. It's really doing the right things right, planning out where we want to be when we evolve and the revolution takes place into plant more plant-based items. But we want to have products that are efficacious. We want to have products that do what they say they're going to do. And we want to have that available to consumers around the world. Uh, James, what, uh, feel free. Um, I would say, I would say definitely like scaling is, is, is like probably the biggest challenge because the thing is it's, it's actually, um, you know, developing your, your products is one thing and there's challenges in that of course, but scaling it out, uh, and, and being able to execute flawlessly is, is something that's, that's difficult. And I think a lot of companies, they, you can grow too fast too soon and what ends up happening is that you just uh you just falter on your execution and that's something that we've always really um been careful about we've always really wanted to like execute well and of course you want to grow quickly i mean that's that's obviously uh, all companies want to grow quick but you, you you have to just be mindful of of, of uh, keeping everything uh, all the different components working together and making sure that ultimately you know, you you're you're getting happy customers, and and you're 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 affecting the change that you want to, um, because otherwise otherwise it's all for nothing. So um, so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of been that's been our I would say our biggest challenge. Uh, I try and stay away from the COVID related questions, but I can't because it's because it's there. Um, how has COVID nineteen impacted your business uh, suppliers, and do you see it changing the way consumers discover plant based? protein companies and feel free to expand on that as far as the discovery. Um, I, I mean, for us, uh, COVID has been really interesting. Uh, it hasn't been what we expected being, being in the restaurant business. I think a lot of people think restaurants COVID is like the death of the death of you sort of thing, but actually for us, we've, we've really uh, transitioned to basically a hundred percent takeout and delivery business. We've always been uh, mostly takeout, but um, but we just shut down and down, and we just really focused on doing a better job uh, on digital advertising and social media, and and really focusing on the delivery part of our business, and 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 because we want to obviously be part of the solution, not the problem, and and uh, delivering food safely is is you know is one of the one of the best ways to do that through COVID. So. Uh, and that's really formed our future model. Um, all of our future locations are small footprint, the delivery optimized. So for example, looking at your delivery radius and, and where you're actually gonna be able to service customers. And it's a, it, 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 it actually um, really changed how we position our, our locations and, uh, and, and changed you know, our, our whole philosophy actually about the business um, for the better, I think. It's, it's more efficient. Uh, I think we still deliver great value to customers. And, and um, yeah, so I mean, for us, it's, it's been, um, it's been interesting. David? Yeah, uh, first, um, thoughts and prayers to those affected by this this um, disease. And uh, we wish them, anyone's affected, uh, speedy recovery. And hopefully um, we're at the uh, other end of this. But what it did for us is, uh, you know, one of the functions we have on our, our, on our chaga is help boosting the immune system. So we're in this not just for the COVID piece of it and, and, and trying to help consumers, but to really react and respond to stress and um, really mental focus and fitness. So, and we're really committed to giving natural and organic uh, opportunities for folks that deal with everyday stress, everyday mental and physical uh, well-being. But in terms of what specifically the challenges during COVID are, is our raw materials, which were all US based here, we've had to form redundancy. So we've thought this through and planned with two and three sources of supply so that as we scale this, to James's earlier point, the scaling and the executing of it, we've planned this out. So as we go forward here and knock off 3,000 doors and then 3,000 more doors and open up our e-com platforms, we'll have the product that we that that our consumers so desperately want and need within their desire. So it's caused us to look within, again, be humbled by the awful experience of what's happening in the world, and really give our consumers and our investors and our opportunity here 
really to make the world a better place. So I wanted to share that. No, we uh, we we thank you, and you know, a, a good, uh, a nice touch, a nice touch to a lot of the industries that are affected um, by COVID nineteen, and a, a lot of the people and lives. And um, I think we will come out the other side uh, changed, different, and you know, just hopefully stronger and and moving forward. Uh, sort of related, but not. Let's. I kind of wanted to talk about the role of ESG and how that plays into your strategy. For people, uh, for people watching, I just put a definition of ESG in the chat: environmental, social, and governance. Um, but yeah, how how does that play into your strategy of of going forward? Um, so, I mean, for us, uh, it's obviously core to what we do. I mean, we're we're a vegan company. So um, that kind of sets the tone for, you know, our, our ethics, obviously. But um, but more than that, I mean, um, you know, we we're not just we're not just plant based. We're we're vegan. I think the the difference of that is is we really advocate for you know animal justice. We support uh, vegan organizations financially. Uh, we um, we support social justice movements, for example, like Black Lives Matter. We did a very big fundraiser last year for that that organization, we are really involved in the community. It's a huge part of what we do um, because, uh, you know, again, we're, we're trying to affect change and, we're, and we are trying to, to be the change in, in the industry. So when our industry is so bad, you have to sort of be the shiny light in that. And I think that's for us uh, a big, uh, you know, that's, that's a big part of what we do. And that's why I get up in the morning. Um, I, I do, we do to, you know, to change the world, to get people to realize that uh, animals matter, that they have, they have the same rights as we do, that we can't just use them in any way that we want to. And um, that we need to, uh, you know, we need to drastically change everything we do immediately. We can't, you know, we can't sit here and take the next 20, 30 years to, you know, to, to think about it. We have to do this now. And I think that's where the social uh, justice and the, the animal rights is, is so effective is, is just demanding change now. And I think that's, uh, that's, we're part of that movement and we're part of supporting that financially. And, and obviously as, as founders and uh, as the founders and leaders of the vegan company, I think that really different, differentiates us from say, you know, the, the plant-based sort of companies out there. Uh, David, right, and and um, with Ritual Elixir products, we're natural, we're vegan, we're organic. We understand that we want to serve our consumers, and our consumers really for both physical fitness and mental health awareness and fitness. Those are the real strong. Uh, pillars of who we are. That's the ethos of who we are. But again, it natural organic, something that you can mix. I drink the product every day. I drink the lion's mane in the morning for a boost with my coffee for my cognitive functions. And as I unplug at night, I drink the Rishi Relax. All again, vegan, all plant-based, all simple formulations on thousands of year old recipes that we've taken to that next step so that we've taken the natural adaptogens, the elethra root, you know, the ashwagandhi, that um, again, all all vegan, all plant based, all natural products and ingredients, and we've really focused this in on making lives better, both physically and mentally. We are we are approaching near the end of our uh, of our presentation session. Um, I'm going to turn it over back to James. If you can leave our audience with a final thought, whether about globally local or or the industry, what would you leave us with? What we are doing is the most important thing that uh, that needs to be done in our planet. You know what I mean? This is the plant-based industry, the vegan movement. Uh, what we're doing is it matters, you know, and it matters to the future of the planet because honestly, I mean, what, what else is more important than that? You know, so um, I think people that invest in companies like us, they understand it. They get it. They get that we are the future, that we're doing things that are going to change the world and that if we don't do it, no one else will. So um, the, the big established companies, you know, they may not uh, they may not be leaders in this. And if you look at their history, they, they, they haven't been. 
So we need uh, we need that new sort of way of thinking. We need companies that are led by people that aren't just uh, about 100% profit. And not that profit isn't important, but it shouldn't be why your company exists. You know, and I think that's uh, I think these are these are the new uh, these are the new sort of breed of companies that we're seeing, and I think this is it's it's very positive and optimistic. I think for the world. So and we're happy to be leaders in that space. Well, thank you, um, and thank you for your efforts as well. Um, David, what's the final thought that you'd like to leave us with? Uh, you know, I'll steal it from um, the CEO of Whole Foods, John Mackey, and that's conscientious capitalism. We can still be good stewards of our business, run a profitable and a thoughtful business, creative, innovative, but we really need to care about what we're doing to the world. And we think here at Ritual, we do both. Well, thank you so much um, for both of you. Thank you to our three presenters, uh, Paul Shapiro, CEO of The Better Meat Company. Unfortunately, he had to leave early, but we still appreciated his contribution uh, nonetheless. James McGinnis, CEO of Globally Local. David Kerbel, CEO of Ritual Superfoods. May you have continued success in expanding your businesses. Thank you to our attendees for your time today. Go to the company websites and learn about these companies and not just the ones that are presenting but the ones that are in the audience um like i said such as lovingly made ingredients if you have a lead for them connect with them um coming up next week plant protein marketing how to keep products on the shelves consumer adoption what are companies doing to be nimble and what are some of the trends and finally financing and investing with my colleague and friend the wonderful Anna Saren. And here's a plug. If you haven't seen her on her new program, The Market Update, you're missing out every Friday with her and Mr. Campbell on CSE underscore TV everywhere. I hope I can say that phrase. Um, special thanks to Scott Exner of MLT Akins, Canada's leading ag food law firm, Brad Farquhar, CFO of Input Capital, and executive in residence at, uh, in agribusiness at the business schools of the University of Regina. Regina Economic Development, as well as Glenn Frazier and Leanne Magilla from MNP, and Jim Harden of AVAC, Nicole Marchand of Snowcap, and CSE folks in Mark Francis, Anil Mall, and Grace Padota. Don't forget to check out CSE underscore TV. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And that is a veggie vegan wrap, folks. We will see you next week. Thank you for your time and stay safe.